I got into woodcuts actually in art school. I was um, one year in painting, but having to make a living, I got into graphic design. As part of graphic design, you have to do topography. The one thing that goes very directly with topography is woodcuts because it's the same printing method. They're both letterpress. I was born in Frankfurt in Germany. My father went to Japan in 36. He was a patent representative for IG Farben for that large chemical concern. We came back in 39 for vacation to Germany. And then after the Polish campaign, we returned to Japan via Siberia. My mother, uh, who was actually an artist but had, had no artistic training in Germany, she did some oil painting on her own, immediately took, uh, started taking a course in Japanese brush painting. My father was also in, had always been interested in Japanese and Chinese philosophy, so I grew up with a Japanese approach to design and, you know, they abhor symmetry. I had an amusing experience this last fall. I had befriended a young Japanese woman who had moved to Ohio near a Toyota plant where there are a lot of Japanese working at the plant and also tourists coming where she showed some of my work and sold it. And she said, the Japanese didn't want this card. That was too Japanese for them. Which I thought was funny, you see. I, I have often heard people mentioning in this, uh, that there was a Japanese influence in my work. In this card, I did actually before I went back to Japan. So that is really the childhood influence from my mother and from living there. I went, came to this country in 1960. Actually, as a travel stop, I didn't mean to stay there. That was 1960s, so 50 some years ago. I taught there for, uh, for five years at the School of Design, taught um, typography and book design, had them make books. It had for me the huge advantage that I had the use of the shop. And I did several things there. Alexander Nesbitt was teaching and uh, graphic design, lettering and typography at the School of Design. He had bought this house and there was a shop in here, had been a carpenter. He said, why don't you start a shop in there? And then I thought, that's actually a very good idea. And then we started looking around, but always kept drifting back to this place and then we bought it. That was in 65. It's a corner of Third and Elm Streets, Third and Elm Press. We started the shop actually as a commercial shop. I did letterheads and uh, invitations and business cards and these things in, in the 90s. I stopped the, the commercial printing. That all had gone to the computer and also I just was tired of it. And the art is, is much more fun. <laughs> you really have to slave away at that commercial printing to make it. And also with letterpress is fairly limited. And then upstairs, our sons lived up there. So we had some skylights put in there that invited itself to turn into a gallery. And that naturally promoted the, the art. And then also you know, after selling a few pieces, I got a little more confidence and framed them better, you know, a little larger, a little bolder, and charged a little more money for it. And so it slowly came up. This is basswood, and this is the um, engraving wood, and this is maple. And then in, in between wood is poplar. See, this is pine. It has more, more grain. I think this is also pine. In coding, you need three colors. Your design, the basic block, and, and the surface of the block, so that if you don't color the surface, you can't see what you have done. And you cut at a, kind of like a pyramid, you know, at an angle, so that it doesn't undercut and then break out when you rub it. Okay. Here we go. Yes, it's the same. And then 
my cake pile. This is a wooden block, an engraving block, and I'm trying to show now the way of printing multicolor from a single block. It's a method that I've developed myself. And here is a print of it, just in one color. Then I print um, the blue, and under the, on the packing, under the sheet that actually takes the print, I put this pattern. It has mm, the, the areas that I want to print in blue are heavily underlaid, and areas that I don't want to have blue, like the big pumpkin, have a hole. And in the print, it looks like this then. And then comes the next thing with the red. Same thing. So in here is the print of it. There is the yellow um, pattern. You can see I totally cut out the blue grapes. And this is then what comes out. I don't really know what other people do, and I find there's an awful lot of this kind of pop art, which doesn't interest me. I do my thing. I, there are not many people doing woodcuts nowadays because it's just plain work. Have you ever noticed, if you watch, particularly I find it in the circus, the trapeze artists, you admire them really only when they fall down. Because, because then you realize how difficult it is. As long as they do it up there, also what? You know, because the funny way about it is that all this work, and this is the same way, has to, to be done as if it was nothing. If you see the effort, it's already, it's not good. When he falls down or when he misses, you know, then you realize how hard it was. <laughs> I don't have a specific goal or aim in saying, no, I, I want my work to be this way of either all black or all white or all famous. <laughs> I just keep on going and see eventually that it has evolved from this to that. I have kind of plotted along, <laughs> I think I'll just keep going <laughs> along that line. <laughs>